All right, guys, welcome back. This is going to be our July tooling series. Um, we weren't able to get one out last month. I really wanted to, but with everything going on, we just didn't have quite the bandwidth to be able to do it last month. So I apologize for that. But we got a pretty good one this month, I think. And if you followed us on Instagram, you probably saw this drawing when I po posted it. And this one, we, we asked a while back on social media for any kind of suggestions for what y'all wanted to see tooled in the next tooling series. And I'm really enjoying these, and I'm thinking everybody's kind of getting a lot of lot from it. We're getting some really good feedback, and so it's just a nice, fun way for us to kind of go through the tooling process and kind of teach some of my techniques and, and things that I do, and that way we can tool along together, and you're not just, you know, it's not just watching somebody else do something. So I posted a while back on social media, just trying to get some suggestions for some tooling ideas, and one of the ones that I had a bunch of people uh, comment on and, and wanted was uh, some type of figure carving and so I figured that'd be kind of fun now I will say that I'm not an expert figure carver by any stretch of the imagination but I do do a fair amount of it in in the shop and so a lot of our projects we've done hunting scenes and wildlife and horses and cattle and everything else and and so I have done a limited amount of it, and I do. Um, I am still learning. So if you're really into figure carving, I would suggest really doing some research and finding some of the top guys out there that are really, really good at it, because there are some guys that are phenomenal with embossing and figure carving and doing that kind of stuff. I'm pretty limited, so I'm going to give you the cowboy version here in this video series. And so this is our pattern. As usual, this pattern is available. Uh, there's a link down in the description. You can sure grab that. It's absolutely free. All you've got to do is enter your email address and we'll send that right to you. And then you can tool along with us. And if you've missed the, the other two, I think we've done two or three of these series. If you've missed those, there'll be links to those at the bottom as well. If you want to go back and tool some other ones, we've done, um, I think it's two. We've done two other series. And so with those, they're the same way. There's a free pattern that goes along with it so that you can tool along with us. But we're going to get started here on this horse and floral pattern and go ahead and, and get rolling on that. And uh, if you've got any suggestions, be sure and let me know. We're keeping a little file of those. And that way, as we go along, hopefully this is a long-term deal. We can do these at least once a month or every other month. And we will be pulling ideas out of that lot of, uh, of submissions that you guys have sent us. So you can e either email those, comment here, or let us know on social media either way. But let's get started tooling this and we'll kind of get some of the initial stuff done right quick in this first video. All right, so as usual, whenever I start any kind of pattern, I'm going to go ahead and bevel my outline uh, outside line. And this has got what we call a hard border or carved border. And so I'm going to go ahead and bevel that line first and get that nice and beveled down. Like I said before, you can do this after or at the end or at another stage or whatever i just prefer to do it first and that way my my border lines are all beveled and and put down um, and i'm using just a cs osborne push beveler here barry king also has some push bevelers um, if you want to check those out i'm sure there's other makers out there that create push bevelers and they make it really handy for long linear lines and getting your borders all beveled quickly and easily. And you've probably seen this in another video, but that's what it is. It's just a CS Osborne push beveler. Looks a lot like a beater, if you've ever seen a beater tool. Um, it basically does the same thing, but it'll do two lines at once. And uh, this is an old tool, so you probably, you'd have to find one of these uh, antiques around. But like I said, Barry King or somebody else may make one or Barry does make one, but somebody else may be making some as well. Now, just to kind of get started on this, since this is a different pattern than, than what we've done uh, up till now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bevel the horse on the main pieces. Now, if you notice, as we go along, there's going to be certain spots that I don't really bevel a whole lot, but I'm going to go through and just mainly get him pulled to the foreground just a little bit so that he's out of our way for the moment. We're not going to do a lot of detail work on him right now. We're going to go ahead and just pull him to the forefront by beveling his perimeter. And then that'll and then we can focus on the floral and get that tooled. Again, you can do it any way you want. You can go ahead and just focus on him until you're done with him if you'd like. I prefer to get the floral tooling done and then camp out on him for a while and do all of our detail work. And so that's what I'm going to do first is just go ahead and get him blocked in and beveled. And then we'll go back and focus on the floral and then in the last video, we'll go and do all of the actual detail work as far as the shading 
lifting and contouring of the uh, the features of this horse's head and so for now what we're gonna do is just a quick bevel to get him kind of blocked in and I'm gonna start that process with my medium-sized beveler and so um, that's if you want to see the tools that I'm using, you can go back and watch the video of our tool roll. We'll put a link in the description and you can watch the tool roll video and that will kind of show you the tools that I use on a daily basis. So we're just going to go through here and bevel. And again, there's going to be some areas that I'm just going to basically just very lightly kind of contour, but we're not trying to just like really cut him in real deep. We're just trying to get a delineation between him and the floral because there are two separate sections of this pattern. So we have a figure carving section, which would be him, the horse, and then we've got the floral. So we've got two different uh, so we got two different disciplines in this pattern that we're dealing with. And so I just want to kind of get him blocked in. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to kind of get him contoured up a little bit. The purpose for this is it's going to help us whenever we go to background our floral. He'll already be kind of beveled and so we won't really affect our backgrounding step and going back in and beveling him again. Okay, so as you can see now, where I'm done with all the beveling here, and basically that's all I did. I know that looked like it went really fast and I missed a lot, but all of these lines that are in the middle of him or you know his figure here, like his, his forelock and his eye and nostrils of the muzzle and then like this mane here, I'm not gonna bevel all that right now because we're not, I'm not gonna focus on him right now. I'm gonna get the floral knocked out. And so basically all I really focused on was any of these lines that were around the perimeter of him where I'm gonna have pieces of background. So that'll become a little more clear when we get to that point as to why I beveled those. But basically anything outside of his image, we, we went ahead and beveled. I did kind of bevel his muzzle here to separate from his lower lip and then the muzzle. Um, that's just because that's a nice clean area and go ahead and do that. But we've got this little background piece here that's gonna be, so we wanna bevel that. We've got background there, so I wanna bevel that. So I kind of beveled all the main lines, but I didn't bevel everything on him. And so that'll be plenty good for now. And now we'll go ahead and start working on our floral and start working on getting that done. So the first thing we're gonna do is start doing our undercuts or lifters as some people call them. Apparently that's what they're called. But anyway, we're gonna undercut them, undercut our pattern. And so I'm gonna go with my medium size lifter from Barry King. This is a Barry King lifter. Um, 
like I said, him or any of the others would be fine. Uh, I do enjoy his lifters more than any of the others that I've seen. Um, not that I have a lot of experience with all the new custom guys that are making tools, but um, this is the one that I use. So here's a, and so we'll go ahead and undercut this with our medium sized Barry King undercut and get everything we can with that one tool at this time. So like right here in these in these ribbon scrolls here, we're gonna go ahead and get what we can. Now I see a spot there I forgot to carve, so I'm going to go ahead and carve that right now. Like I said, if you see stuff like that, go ahead and grab it while you see it. Because you'll forget it again. So once you see something you miss, no matter what tool you're using, go ahead and grab the right tool and fix it. Again, I'm mainly focused on whatever I can get in the pattern, all the way through the pattern, with this one tool. If it's too big of a too big of a curve, um, then I won't use this tool. I'll just skip over it. So we're about to step up to our bigger undercut, and when we do that, we'll get the other pieces. So for now, I'm just getting what I. I know this tool will do. And that's pretty much everything I can get with that one. So now we'll step up to our large undercut, our large lifter by Barry King, and we'll go ahead and get all the other spots, any curves I can get with this. So that's all of our undercuts there. 
We've lifted everything, gone through anywhere it would fit. And so now we'll go and I'm gonna grab my crowner, my large crowner. We don't really have any kind of real tight little scallops in this pattern. These are really smooth type leaves. And so this bigger uh, crowner is probably gonna be the best thing. And to just get any of our tips of, uh, of the leaf, like right here, we can go ahead and get that. There's not gonna be a lot to do with this in this particular pattern, but we're gonna go ahead and get what we can just because it'll save us some time. And we can probably get a few of these little areas. Not that they're very hard to bevel, but we can go ahead and get them started. All right. And now we'll be ready for beveling. All right, so just like in our other patterns, we're gonna start with our uh, medium-sized beveler. Um, it's gonna work great for this size. Like I said, I, I very rarely use my my bigger beveler. Um, you certainly can if you've got a, a wider beveler. You wanna use the the widest beveler that you have or the biggest one that you have for for each of each section of your pattern. So whatever you can use to uh, to get those longer lines, if you've got a bigger one that you can still get those lines beveled with really well, then you wanna use that. I tend to usually go with this medium sized one and everybody always asks, but this is just a cheap craft tool uh, beveler that's about wore out. It's actually a Craft Japan, but I love it. It just, I don't know, it, it works really well. It is checkered, but as you can see, it's pretty wore down. So it's pretty much smooth. Um, check it or smooth is just kind of a personal preference um, this one says SB3 on it if you uh, are looking for to find one just like this it's an SB3 Craft Japan but uh, Barry King's got some of the best bevelers that I've used um, I have only a couple of them but this one is just kind of my my go-to and I just like the way it works uh, I think it's mainly the age of it so if you get a new one and don't seem to enjoy it as much it's probably some of the age on this one it's probably a very older uh it's probably a very much older tool and um just used a lot so that's probably what makes it makes it decent but anyway we're going to get started on the beveling and again we've already beveled the horse somewhat and got him kind of blocked in so we're going to leave him alone for the most part for the moment and we're just going to focus on the floral part that's just how i do it you can certainly tool him first and then do the floral last whatever you want to do i just tend to do my floral and get it knocked out and out of the way and then come back and do my fine tuning on my figure whatever the figure is and i do that for brands initials uh you know critters whatever we're we're tooling that's kind of a focal point in the pattern so but we'll get started on the beveling and we're going to get everything that we can with this beveler so if it's too big and it doesn't fit on some of the lines we're not going to worry about it we're just going to keep doing keep rocking on here and just tooling what we can get with this one to me, it, it makes it makes good sense to just get everything you can with one tool at a time and not switching between tools. Um, that tends to slow you down as far as just uh, just your speed and efficiency when you're tooling a pattern. So I don't I don't switch tools uh, very often until I'm done doing everything that I can with that one tool. As far as my cadence or my process here of, of beveling, I need to go back and watch some of the earlier tooling series as far as why I'm tooling which lines first, and that's so that we don't have to go back and touch up. So you always want to be tooling or beveling, especially you want to be beveling away from you, and that way you're not having to go back and fit fix lines that you squash down. You know, if you bevel. If you bevel a line and then bevel 
next one in front of it, you're going to squish down what you uh, what you beveled for. There's one we missed with the lifter. So there is kind of a kind of a process there. You want to try to minimize any any having to go back and rebevel stuff. So like on these lines here, just a real quick refresher here as I started. I started with this line here, then went to this one, then went to this one, then went to this one, and again, all the way out, cascaded away from me. If we went here and here, then we're going to mash down this, we're going to go back and touch it up. And if we go here, we're going to mash that down, so we're going to touch it up, and then we're going to touch that up again. So you're constantly backtracking. So you always want to work away from you, and that way, if you're beveling, like for instance on this one, if we bevel this line here, these two lines get really close together, and this one we haven't done anything with yet. So we're not, we don't have any chance of messing up the bevel on this line. And then this line here, we haven't beveled yet. So that's just kind of how I do it. I turn my work so that I can cascade away from me when I'm beveling lines. Like I said, I go over that in more in depth in the very first tooling series that we did so you can sure find that on our channel we got a little bit of you'll see sometimes when you carve you'll get a little deal like that I don't know if you can see that real well but there's just a little piece of leather right here that flipped up from our carving and if you ever get that sometimes you can mash it down with a beveler sometimes it won't sometimes it just sticks up just Pull that out of there. Just get it out. Get it out of there. Mash it down. Whatever you got to do. It's just a matter of just how your blade came in when you were carving that. We may take a little razor blade and cut that out. But probably when we when we bar ground that, it'll pack it in there where it won't pop up anymore. And when it comes to beveling, it's gonna take some practice, but you need to get to the point to where you can, where you, when you're beveling, you're not getting the little hash marks or the little bevel marks. You want it smooth. There shouldn't be any kind of, any kind of hash marks. And then what I'm talking about is like on this, this vine here. Usually when we start out, it looks like this. Because you're moving and hitting. And so you end up with these little tick marks in there. And I do not like to see that at all in my work. So I try my best to always smooth those out if I do get any. But if you see any of those little marks like that, that's not a very smooth bevel job. So it's just one of the things that you've got to kind of practice. That's going to catch light and it's just going to look not smooth. So so what you want to get to, to, uh, to, what, to how you can do this is you want to get to where when you're beveling, you're sliding the beveler, but you want to get to where you can, where you can bevel smoothly. And like I've said before, I'm, I'm bracing with my pinky and my, my, my ring finger there, and then I'm actually holding it. I mean, it's touching the leather, but it's ba barely kind of sitting up. And as I hit it, it's like pneumatic almost, like, it, like a jackhammer kind of. It's, it, I'm able to slide it, but it's every time I tap it, it's moving. And so all you're doing is guiding it through that cut. And don't feel bad if you gotta go back and smooth it out and tap over it. You'll get better at it, but the point is to not leave it with those little hash marks in there. Um, Cause to me, that's very, very rough looking. It's not very appealing. So you want your bevels to be nice and smooth, even around the edge of stuff. If you're tooling and you don't have a hard border like this and your, your floral is actually making your border, that's even more of a reason to make sure that your bevel is nice and smooth. If it's, if it's got hash marks around it, that, that looks like a rush job. And you, went, you just went fast and didn't take the time to make it look smooth. So take a little extra time. Over time, you'll get better at it to where you don't have to focus on it as much your beveling will just naturally come out smooth just 
like anything else, it just takes a lot of practice. And that's a good thing with beveling. There's tons of beveling that needs to be done if you're going to tool floral, so you'll have plenty of practice. It's not, not like you need to get up at 4 in the morning and just practice beveling lines. You'll have plenty of lines to bevel if you're tooling floral patterns. I have had some people comment on uh, social media as well as YouTube about thinking that, uh, or, you know, realizing that I'm tooling this leather a lot drier than they do. And I will say that is a lot, of, a lot of a common mistake at the beginning is that if your beveling's not looking really good and it's kind of mushy looking or it just doesn't stay down, it doesn't get that crisp bevel. <clears throat> A lot of times that is too too wet of leather so you can definitely tool it when it's too wet and over cased and so I traditionally tool most of my patterns a lot drier than I think most do but that's gonna give you the most color and there's a fine line in there on you know comfort level as far as you know where it feels right for you and and uh, also getting the color that you want and stuff. So it's something you're going to kind of have to just play with and get figured out. But um, but I would rather see you tool it too dry than too wet because it doesn't doesn't tend to bevel as well, especially on the beveling and the bar grounding. The bar grounding will look really mushy if it's too wet. And so a lot of the moisture level level when it comes to casing has to do with the thickness of your leather. So on these tooling series uh, videos, we're tooling just 13, 15 ounce Herman Oak. And that's what I use predominantly in the shop. 
for saddles and stuff and so that's what we're using on these they tool the best you get the most depth out of them the easiest and so that's what i'm using so these are going to take a little bit more moisture than say like a piece of seven ounce or even four ounce or five ounce if you're making wallets and stuff like that um those you can definitely get too wet too fast and then they take a while to dry out and then you're trying to bevel them and tool them and they're just they're just too wet so it's one of the things yes i would rather see you tool with a little bit too dry a leather than too wet so just keep that in mind if you're not seeing the burnish and the color that you want if you're not seeing the crispness in your bevels and your stamps then a lot of times it's going to be because your, your leather is just too wet and it's, it's a simple fix i mean it's not something that's you know it takes practice and skill necessarily to just let the leather dry out a little bit more so but it does take some skill to be able to to know when your leather is ready to tool so um, I suggest and I do this on almost everything that I do is I use them uh, just a water bottle and mist things down I don't submerge leather very very seldom will I do that uh, a lot of times on a fender or something that I know I'm going to be there a while tooling on I will drench those in the uh, in the case bucket and get them nice and wet and then let them dry out and then try to start tooling while it's on the dry out you know while it's on its way way out but um but for smaller projects and stuff you're more than fine just misting it with a bottle and tooling and so you might even have to mist it again if it starts to get a little too dry but like i said you'll you'll kind of figure out your sweet spot as far as where you need to be moisture level wise and so but kind of a rule of thumb with me is if you think it's too wet it probably is so let her dry out a little bit put her in front of a fan a lot of times I, I want it to be just a hint darker than pure dry leather but i don't want it you know as far as color wise goes but i don't want it super dark if it's super dark then that means it's, you got a lot of water in there so let that dry out Especially if you're tooling really thin leather and really tight patterns, you really don't want that too wet because you'll mush those lines all together and it can get really squirrely. So you need to be sure you're on the dry side.
I'm going to go through here now and I'm going to try to get all the short lines that I can with this beveler. This one's a pretty steep beveler. Um, I get a lot of questions on if these are extra steep or super steep or whatever they call them. Um, again, it's a craft tool. So I'm, I'm, I know it's steeper than other craft tools that I have in the box, but it uh, it's probably not as steep as like the, uh, the steep ones that Barry or some of these other Sheridan guys sell. But it works good for these short lines because I can kind of get in there. And so I'm not going to say you need super steep bevelers for everything you tool, but they do come in handy for getting some of the some of the little shorter lines in these tight spots. more you can get with this one the less we gotta use the little the little bitty beveler so I try to pick up as much as I can as I'm going and that way I don't it just takes so much longer with that little bitty beveler but we'll come through and clean up what we can't get with this so that looks about right we'll just grab our little bitty beveler now this is a Barry King and uh, it's a small one it's not like extra small it's just a small beveler i don't know doesn't have a number on it so just have to visit with him if you want one he'll know which one you're talking about i'm sure or anybody else clay miller or that black crack or whoever's tools you like to use it is only a personal preference. I'm pretty limited on tools that I've I've used. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to buying new tools. I usually modify or just stick with what I've got and make it work, but I could use to buy a few tools actually. I got a few that are getting pretty pretty wore out. All right. So that's the first, our first video there. We've gotten uh, everything on there. Like I said, we went through with our push beveler. Like I said, this is just an old Osborne push beveler. Um, it's just for long straight lines like that. That's what we use for our border. Um, you may be able to find one of these used. I don't know if Osborne still makes this or not. I'm, I would assume they do, but Barry King makes one. And I'm sure there's somebody else who makes one, but they're pretty handy to have. And then we used our uh, lifters or undercuts, whichever you'd prefer to call them, our Barry King lifter and undercuts to get the all of our little curves. And then we used our crowner just for like these little tips here. Anything that kind of comes and makes a curve like that, if you can grab that with a crowner, that'll save you a lot of a lot of beveling time. Now that these leaves are very hard. And I see a spot we missed there with a beveler. We'll go ahead and catch that. Remember, if you miss a spot, get it while you're looking at it. it. May not seem important on a pattern this small, but you get into some bigger saddle patterns and different things that you're doing or a big photo album, you'll miss it, and then you'll think you'll come back to it, and you'll forget about it, or you won't be able to find it. Uh, it's your customer might. So, um, but that's it. And then we did all the beveling. And so in the next video, we'll do, uh, we'll pretty much probably wrap up the floral. We'll do the, the backgrounding and then we'll do the other stuff, all the decorative cutting and all that stuff. And then we'll, in the third video, we'll focus on the horse and doing the, uh, 
and, and doing the figure carving part. So remember this pattern is available by, uh, through the link down in the description. So you can grab that uh, if you need it. If you want to tool along with us, you can sure grab that by just clicking that link and then pop your email address in there. We'll shoot that right over to you. We'll move on to the next video and uh, appreciate it. If you got any other questions or anything, just uh, shoot us an email or put a comment down in the description, but we'll put all the links and everything in the description that you need. So I appreciate y'all. Thank you very much.